bring your awareness to the breath. Think about the breath and then notice where you feel the breath. Not just the air coming in and out of the lungs through the nose, but any place in the body where there's a sensation that corresponds to the breathing. The rise and fall of the abdomen, the rise and fall of the chest. The more subtle feelings you may feel in your neck, in your head, your shoulders, down your back, in your arms, your legs. Any place where you notice the breath clearly, be aware of that. And try to establish a sense of balance. What kind of breathing feels right? It, what kind of breathing is too long? What kind of breathing is too short? What kind of breathing is just right, just long enough, just short enough? The same thing with deep and shallow heavy and light, broad or narrow. Experiment to see what brings the breath into balance, and brings the mind into balance with the breath, so you're not clamping down on it too hard, and at the same time you're not holding it too loosely. Classic images of a person holding a baby chick in his hand. If you hold it too tight, the chick is going to die. If it's too loose, the chick will fly away. So try to bring things into a sense of just right, a sense of balance, and see what you're going to do to maintain that balance. As things come up in the mind, how do you not get swept away by them? So you stay right where you are. It's like being in a ship out in the ocean. The waves rise and the waves fall. But if your ship has a good gyroscope, the ship doesn't lose its balance. This principle is important in the practice not only while you're sitting here, but as you take your practice out into the outside world. Because the world has its waves. There's material gain and there's material loss. Status, loss of status. Praise, criticism, pleasure and pain. These things rise and fall, rise and fall like waves. And some of them are rogue waves, some of them come a huge rise in the water. Sometimes some are gentle. But it's a, Sometimes even gentle waves can knock you over if you're not careful. And so you want to have this sense of having a gyroscope inside, something that helps keep you balanced. Part of it is just this physical sense of having a good center inside that you maintain wherever you go. It might be in your chest, it might be in the middle of your head. Any place where you can just maintain a sense of the body is here, and your awareness is here, and the awareness isn't too tight, blood is flowing easily, you're not tensing up around your center. Whatever sense of ease there is in your center, you think of it spreading out from there. And then just try to maintain that sense of a center. That's one kind of gyroscope you can carry into your dealings with other people, you can carry into whatever your encounters are. Try to maintain that <coughs> physical sense of center as steadily as you can, so you don't get knocked over by the waves of what the other person might be saying or how you're reacting to the other person. Whatever comes up, you try to maintain this balance inside. And it's important that you maintain this as a classical image in the canon, two acrobats on the end of a bamboo pole. The question is, should they look after each other, or should each look after him or herself? And the answer is, you each look after yourself, maintain your balance. And the more steadily you maintain your balance, the easier it will be for other people to maintain their balance around you.
So think of this physical sense of the center where the breath energy is good and you tend to it, look after it as your gyroscope. But you need more than just that. You also need an understanding about the ways of the world and a strong sense of the importance of maintaining your state of mind as a solid thing in the midst of the world. Because otherwise, even though you may have some skill in maintaining your balance, old ideas can come welling up. And if you have nothing to fend them off, you're going to get washed away. So reflecting on those eight ways of the world is a helpful practice. Because what does the world have to offer? Just that. Gain, material gain, material loss, status, loss of status, praise, criticism, pleasure, pain. That's it. And what is there of any lasting value in any of these things? The only value is if you find a way to do good, say, with your gain or with your status. And learn lessons from your loss. Keep reminding yourself, this is the way the world is. Things come and things go. When they go, they really weren't yours to begin with anyhow. That image we discussed this morning about the, the man going around with borrowed goods, getting his pleasure out of things that belong to other people. That's the way the world is. You look at the money you gain. It doesn't have your name on it. Even your credit card, the name of the bank is bigger than your name. It's more important than your name. And the bank can call that credit card back any time it wants. It's not really yours. So if you're looking for pleasure, looking for satisfaction outside, you're looking in the wrong place, because none of that, these things really belong to you. Even your own body doesn't really belong to you. You're using it for the time being, and then you have to send it back. In the meantime, while you have it, you want to make the best use of it so that you can get something of permanent value or lasting value out of it. So it's not just the pleasure of having these things, but it's the good that you do with them. When you learn to be generous with the material things, that becomes an, a quality in the mind. When you use your status to help other people, that's a quality of compassion. When you meet with praise and criticism, you can develop the wisdom of looking at what other people say, looking at their intentions, and also looking at yourself. After all, sometimes criticism is very useful, as the Buddha once said. Someone points out your faults, you should regard that as someone who points out treasure. In other words, if the faults really are genuine faults, you've learned something. Because our faults are very difficult for us to see. We tend to hide them in places where we know we're not going to look. When people praise you, remember it's their way of encouraging you, not just to stay where you are, but to get better, to keep on being good. That's for pleasure and pain. There's. There are many different kinds of pleasure, and you want to, learn, want to learn how to find a pleasure that's not intoxicating, that doesn't blur your mind's vision. And if looking for the real source of your pleasure inside. As for pain, the Buddha said this is an excellent way of learning noble truths. I mean, the first noble truth is stress, the stress that comes from craving, the stress that comes from clinging. When you find the mind suffering from pain, you ask yourself, okay, where is the cause of that suffering? It's not so much in, say, in a physical pain, but it's in the clinging and the craving. That's what you want to look out for. So these waves of the world they have, where they're ups and downs. When you can learn from both the ups and the downs, then you're safe. 
and your gyroscope is not going to get knocked over easily. So your protection is both the concentration and the discernment working together to maintain your sense of balance. The things that used to knock you over don't knock you over anymore. The waves come past and they just go past. You stay upright as things go up and as things go down. That's the skill you want to take with you. You can't take the monastery with you. You can't fold it up in a little package and take it home. Spread it out and surround yourself with it. But you can't take these skills. Try to maintain this center as you get up and not only while you're sitting and meditating, but then when you get up from the meditation as you walk around. When you go to sleep, try to stay with that sense of the center. Until you drift off. When you wake up, that should be your first question. Where is my center? Establish that and then think about what you have to do next. So the wisdom here is, lies in having a sense of giving priority to your gyroscope inside. So none of the waves of the world can knock you off course.